What's up? How you doing? Here we are. Beautiful day today. We're in between storms. So it was raining yesterday. It stopped. And I think there's something coming. Something in the Pacific Ocean is heading our way. So it's going to be fine. So I have here my uh, shaving kit. This is the leather, uh, I don't know, box that I carry it in. It's got the leather straps there. And I've had it for many years probably around 20 years and today I'm gonna re uh, repaint it re dye it using uh, Angelus or Angelus or whatever uh, something like that you can read for yourself there I don't know if it's a soft G like giraffe or a hard G like gorilla I don't know so anyway it's a leather finisher and uh, I've used this before, not this specific one, but a brown, dark brown one on my boots. Had my boots, they started to look a little shabby, and uh, gotta shake it. And the uh, the polish that I was using was doing a great job, but it wasn't permanent. Where well, this is permanent, and so I did it. Uh, I did it nice and dark brown, and I'm gonna do this. This is jet black. Jet black and comes with a nice little cotton ball there whatever that is and you're supposed to put it here in the box so it doesn't tip over because once it tips over it stains everything it's like walnut uh, dye except probably many times more potent Nice. They say two coats and then let it dry for 24 hours. 24. I'll let it dry for longer. Maybe 25. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I'm a big fan of polishing shoes after you use them bring them home clean them out maybe a little saddle soap remove all that gunk dust and then uh, once they dry take some good shoe polish and polish them keep the leather nice and supple all right so I can see the magic happening already here. I don't want to dip it again because it seems like it has enough on there for now. I'm just going to close it up. It's drying fast. I don't know why I need 24 hours. But it's it's an amazing product. I did my boots. My, my other boots, because these are now uh, pretty new, but I did them a few years ago. I came out here and I uh, had a dark brown, brown, and uh, then I, I let it dry. A couple of days, I put them aside. Had a spare pair of boots. And then once they were 100% dry, they had that dull finish because it's, you know, it's not a shine. And then I, I, uh, I buffed them. I put the other uh, S Sapphire, Sapphire. I used that, polished them up, and they looked brand new but broken in at the same time. Yeah, I love it when my leather breaks in. You can't do that with canvas. I mean, it'll break into a point, but not like leather. Leather becomes you after a while. All right. Beautiful. This is coming out really nice. I feel like I'm, you know, doing a GTO with new paint. 
1967 GTO brand new paint. So I mentioned the other day that uh, Billy Joel with an L was releasing a new song, something he hadn't done in a long, long time, and an album he hadn't done since 93. And with that album, River of Dreams, I was a little bit disappointed. A little bit disappointed. Quiet. And so, I was living in Long Beach. When I got that one, I was anticipating it. I was very excited. New album coming out. And I got it and I heard it tons of times and just didn't grow on me. It did not sound like a Billy Joel album and I was not happy with it. And then he, on top of that he announced, I was reading in the, uh, I think it was Billboard magazine, that he will not be doing any more new pop songs, at least for a long time. And I remember reading that, I was in a car in a parking lot, and I was very disappointed. I go, at least he could have left me with a decent album. I know a lot of people, they were okay with that album, but not me. Didn't like it, didn't sound, he changed producers, I mean, okay, he changed produce, producers, producers, for the Stormfront album, but that was Mick Jones, and I still could relate to that, that album did sound like Billy Joel, as a matter of fact, I, I was a big, and I still am a big fan of Stormfront, the album, love that album, but for some reason, River of Dreams was not for me. And it was okay, but not what I expected. I will say I did like Shades of Grey. Uh, Grey Wall of China was okay. Blonde Over Blue. But then the rest of them were filler. You know? So, this is what happened the other day. February 1st which was yesterday. Go to bed all excited on the 31st because I'm anticipating this. I felt like the old days again, you know, when I was a big fan and I would, you know, be very excited. It was like I was traveling somewhere like, you know, fancy on an airplane and I couldn't sleep that night. So anyway, I'm, I'm anticipating this, this song being released and I go upstairs get in bed and I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about it, I go, I can't believe it, tomorrow at our time, 4 a.m., uh, they were releasing at 4 a.m. here, so I go to sleep and I wake up at 4.06, and I'm tempted now to go downstairs, turn on the computer, the computer's always on, but, and listen to it, I'm tempted, but I go, okay, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get up at 6.30, I'll hear it then, close my eyes, and I don't, for some reason, my, my mind thought that like an hour and a half went by and I wake up and I'm like, okay, it should be almost 6.30. So I look at my, my uh, phone there next to me and uh, it's 4.08, two minutes later. So I'm having time dilation, two minutes later. Close my eyes again and now I wake up again and I go, yeah, now it's got to be. It just felt like time went by. 4.16. Get up again at 4.28, you know. And then I said, oh, man, this is crazy. I, I just can't, you know, whatever. So at 6.20 something, 6.28, I finally got up, went downstairs, and I'm all excited now. This is, I'll tell you what it felt like. Eddie and the Cruisers, when Eddie fakes his death, and everybody thinks Eddie died, and then they make Eddie, uh, Eddie's alive, or Eddie Wilson lives. Eddie Wilson lives. And um, you see he's alive, and then at the end of it, towards the end, he, he goes to the beach where he's going to bump into his friend, his best friend. This is his name, Sal, his best friend who thought that Eddie died driving the car off the bridge. So here's Sal with his kid walking, and he looks over and he sees it's Eddie Wilson. Eddie Wilson. That's how I felt yesterday morning. You know, when I'm, I'm about to hear something, it's like Billy Joel that I knew had died in 93. And all of a sudden, we find out, no, he didn't die. He didn't die. Not only did he not die, but he's got a new, new uh, single coming out. So I put it on, and I'm like, I'm saying to myself, please, 
don't be disappointed. I don't want to, you know. And it starts playing, and I'm not disappointed. As a matter of fact, I'm satisfied. I think he did a great job. I think the song is great. I think it's awesome. Uh, it's exactly like what you would expect a Billy Joel song to sound like. It's a ballad, you know, so that's what I expected him to come back with. And I enjoyed it. I heard it a lot of times. Every time I heard it, it got a little bit better. But I appreciated it from the very beginning. I am so happy that he did that. You know, I'm so... I'm like, I can't tell you how happy I am. I, I was a, a massive uh, fan, huge fan. I know I see people on the internet, oh, I'm a big Billy Joel fan. Believe me, I was crazy into his stuff. Crazy into his stuff. I would listen to Billy Joel music endlessly. Day in, day out. No matter where I was, Billy Joel was playing. You know, go home after school, turntable, Billy Joel. My friends at school would say, don't you get sick and tired of hearing Billy Joel all the time? And no. And then, then the uh, River of Dreams came out. And I don't know, something happened. It's like I was disappointed. I didn't enjoy the music as much. And, I, and, and on top of that, he stops making pop music. So I started drifting. And I mean, I'm still a fan, but not like I was back in the uh, late 70s and uh, early in the entire 80s. Huge fan. But anyway, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Uh, you know, good tune. I hear uh, she's always a woman in there. The way the piano is uh, similar. I hear sprinkles of Elton John even. There's, there's a little bit like an Elton John sound in there. Of course, certain places the drums sound like the Down Easter Alexa. Has a bit of that sound. And if you pay attention, uh, I don't know if it's the piano uh, solo area where he plays the piano. Uh, I think in that spot you can actually hear scenes from an Italian restaurant influence. So, you know, lyrics, you know, Decent lyrics, especially the first verse, but they're all they're all good, and catchy chorus. So, like I said, I have no issue with the song, and I'm glad that he went with a young producer and not some guy who's like 70 years old who uh, was in his prime 45 years ago. I'm glad he did that. I'm a big advocate of that. Where if you're making a comeback, get a current guy. You know. Don't get guys that were in their prime 35, 40 years ago. Those guys, are, you know, they're worn out now. They, they don't have that uh, that drive that they had. They don't have the creativity anymore the same way that they had it back then. So he did the right thing. So my hat off to him, or my hat's off if I had two. Really appreciated that. I've waited a long time. And uh, finally, it's happened. Now, I don't know what the... There are rumors, though, that there may be uh, an album coming out. But I don't know. I, I wish that is the case. Wish that is the case. That would make me extremely happy. But it just seems unlikely, you know? Saying that, I'm, I'm not speaking from like insider knowledge. I don't. I didn't talk to like Billy Joel's, uh, you know, cousin or something. I hope. I hope that he has something like ten songs, nine songs, whatever, and that uh, they're going to announce, you know, in the next few days that uh, there's a forthcoming album coming out. Even turn the lights back on. The title. It's like from the opposite of You May Be Right. It says turn out the lights on that one. So there's a lot of, you know, things in there that you hear and you go, Billy Joel, Billy Joel. But like I said, you know, because I was a huge fan when I was younger, um, I'm still attached to him in some way. Nostalgic reasons. And I appreciate his music, you know. I, I was, uh, you know, spending a lot of my high school years well, all my high school years, just listening to Billy Joel. Of course, I listen. Go home to your mama there in the basement, the loud car. Of 
course I listened to other stuff as well but he was the top guy for me top top even my father who was not big on you know the music in the car like get in the car and he he turned the radio on it'd be the talk radio or something and it would be on like volume like the button would be on like two or three on the volume and then I'd say uh, I put some music on he put the music and it would still be on volume two or three and I'd say put a little higher he'd say well you take my uh, head away this is too much he goes to me but when Billy Joel would come on and he would hear moving out he would crank it up to about an eight the only song and he would always say to me, it's a un that's an unusual song. I never uh, heard a song before that has an ack, ack, ack in it. So anyway, yeah, like I said, I am very pleased. Thank you to Billy Joel. I really appreciate it. I've been saying for years, you know, he should do something for the fans. And I feel like this is for the fans. Like he's speaking to us in that song. You know, he's basically saying, all the words that he's saying, you know, I left the, the business, I didn't write anything new, and I feel like he's singing it to us, people waiting all these years. Of course, the metaphors make it sound like it's a relationship with a, with a woman, but to me, it sounds like he's speaking to the fans. So, like I said, I'm very grateful that the, uh, the song is out, and, and it's a good one. It's a good one. I hope, though, that there's an album in the works. I hope. That would make me very excited. But yeah, that's what happened the other day, yesterday. I, I got up and I, I was like going to the computer, like like the main event of, you know, some huge, huge, uh, you know, boxing match that was coming. I was like hitting the buttons. I was all nervous. There's no intro to the song. So he just begins with, please. No intro. All right. So, yeah, like I said, to me, it's like Eddie, Eddie lives. Eddie lives. Billy Joel, the way I knew him, had died in 1993. And then it's like they discovered him working at the haberdashery shop, and they inspired him to do another thing, another song, and here he is. That's how I feel. I feel like that, like Eddie and the Cruisers, Eddie lives. Love that movie. All right, we got everything colored here. Uh, let the I'll let the top dry and then I'll flip it over. They say it's hard to get off your hands, but I don't believe it. Well. Anyway, for now, that's it. Um, I'm going to flip it in a few when the top dries, and then uh, I, I will uh, continue, and then I'll let it rest somewhere for over 24 hours. So, once again, thank you, Billy Joel. I pronounce the L. Um, I overemphasize it, because a lot of times when I say it fast, it sounds like I'm saying Billy Joe. And, uh, you know, Billy Joe from Alabama, or Arkansas. All right. Well, I'll be back again later. Ciao.